and welcome to this week's YouTube video. This week I'm going to show you the first part of the overpainting for this picture I am currently working on. I've had to split the overpainting into two otherwise I think the video would have just been too long and I wanted you to see the process in its entirety for it to hopefully make sense. This is the reference photo that I will be working from. I will be using the Zorn palette for the overpainting. The Zorn palette consists of cadmium red, yellow ochre, ivory black which has a strong leaning to blue and also white. So I have my two warms in cadmium red and also yellow ochre. Cadmium red is obviously your warmest warm. I have my two cools in black and white. The Zorn palette is really great for simple colour mixing and helping you think in terms of temperature. To achieve form, I need to shift my temperatures. So I need to think about this photo in terms of warm or cool blacks and or warm or cool whites. So for example, here I have a black directly next to a pop of white where the light is catching the side of Fin Fin's face. If I want that white to pop, then I don't want to just put ivory black next to it because that would be two calls together and won't give me that sense of form that I'm after. I need to warm one of them up, either the black or the white, and I only have two choices, red or yellow, to achieve this. Also, notice this black area over here. This area here, though, is carrying a lot of red. Therefore, I can just leave this area here as ivory black because I will have my colour shift from warm to cool. It's these things I need to think about before I start painting because my reference photo is limited for accurately describing, in terms of the nuances of colour, what I am looking at. A camera just cannot pick up those subtleties, so I will need to put them in myself. Let's start painting anyway and I'll talk about it in a bit more detail as we go along. As this is quite a difficult painting, I have split this over painting into two parts. So I will cover the canvas in paint for this first video, which is about an hour of painting time. But then I will have another go at it in next week's video when I go back over my over painting again. My first pass on this painting is really to try and knock out as much of this raw umber underpainting as I can. I find it very distracting on my eye. So just getting rid of it first is important before I can go back and assess how out I am with the colour choices I have made. If you want to know the exact painting brands I am using, have a look in the description below because, for example, I am actually using Yellow Ochre Light by Rembrandt as I prefer this colour to just Yellow Ochre and I think it's helpful to know these things if you're following along at home. On this first pass, I am not using any painting medium. I am just using the paint from the tube. Sometimes they may get slightly thinned down by the mineral spirits I'm using to clean my brush, but I am not really intentionally making them super thin as I want to get rid of that raw umber as I said before. The good thing about that underpainting is that I have worked out a lot of the values already so I can test a colour by just dabbing it on the canvas to check my values. I'm making sure I am not wildly out with my colours before I start covering the underpainting. Also, raw umber is quite similar to flesh tones anyway, so often there doesn't seem like there is much of a change to what I am adding. Thank you. 
I should also say that it is quite hard to talk non-stop for one hour, so at times I may go silent, so please don't adjust your volume, I'm just not talking. I actually ended up printing this photo out too. Often looking at backlit screens can affect how you view the colours and as they are so subtle in this photo, I thought it was safer to print it out rather than to work straight from my iPad, which is what I usually do. I've talked about the Zorn palette in my other videos and would definitely recommend giving it a try, especially for portrait painting. It really simplifies your colour choices. I don't paint portraits very often and dealing with skin tones takes a lot of skill and practice. Zorn makes it so much easier because you really don't have that many choices and that many opportunities to get it wrong. The flesh tone that you are looking at is either going to be warm or cool. So for the forehead, it is in the shadows. The light in this photo is cool, so my shadows will be warm. Remember the rule, cool light equals warm shadows, warm light equals cool shadows.
So I need a mix that is either heavier on my red or yellow. But as it is dark in the shadow, I need to add it straight to my black. I can see the area in the far corner as my forehead disappears into Fin Fin's chest hair is the warmest area. So that will carry the most red. The area near my eyebrows is more of a green yellow. So that will carry yellow plus black. It is interesting to note that when you add a yellow hue to ivory black, it makes a sort of a green. This is due to the blue pigment in ivory black. So that raw umber then is making it quite hard for me to judge the skin tones. This is my slight issue with this process of painting. I find it very difficult to ignore that raw umber, but for such a hard painting, I felt getting the drawing right and giving myself a head start on those values was worth the trade-off.
So as I navigate my way around the shadows of the face, Zorn makes it very hard for me to make the wrong choices because I know my shadows are warm, so it will either be yellow or red or some combination of the two. As I begin to add my colours, it makes it much easier for me to judge the overall colour choices I am making. I am not worrying too much at this stage if I am out. My aim is to get it covered. I'll fix any issues on the next layer.
I have probably been more comprehensive with the underpainting than normal, so it is just going to take me a bit longer to figure out the hues and temperatures. There is no correct amount of time that it should take. It will take as long as it takes me to do. So don't feel under pressure to get a painting done quickly. Sometimes they just take longer. I'm switching between two brushes, a flat and a round. I'm trying to keep my edges soft. Sometimes I find it helps to run my long haired coma brush over areas. Because the brushes have very long hairs and they are very uneven at the end, they are very good for wet on wet painting and don't take the paint off too easily like the flat brushes that I use. Also, they provide very soft strokes, so are great for softening edges.
Really, my hardest edge wants to be this one here and here. I have my strongest area of contrast in both of them. And also, Fin Fin's hair produces a complex shape which makes it interesting for the eye to look at. So everywhere else, I am aiming to keep my edges soft, even for the detail on Fin Fin's legs. If I fall into the trap of painting this area here too precisely with strong edges, it will compete with this area here. And then I will lose the focus of my painting, which is the emotional connection between both subjects. Painting detail will not give me this, and I may have to narrow down my values in the leg area here and just suggest this wispy fur. The more paint I am laying, 
the more easily I am beginning to judge how far out I am on my colour and temperature choices. I really wanted you to be able to see that it is not something that I immediately get or see straight away. I am constantly trying to work it out, figure out where I am off and interpret what I am seeing. And I don't get it right straight away. So don't feel bad if it takes you a while to resolve your paintings. I think for most artists, it is a battle between getting it, losing it and getting it again. Especially as you get into the later stages of a painting, I think this is where it becomes more dangerous to lose what you have painted. Because you start to focus on the detail, but it is easy to forget to keep standing back and view what you are painting in context to everything else. It is easy to overcompensate in what you think you're seeing because there are areas of subtle value changes within larger areas. For example, on the forehead, there is a very slight change in value 
as the light makes it across the face and then down, just as you would expect a sphere to behave. It is very easy to see the very subtle value change in the photo and then to overcompensate for this in your painting. So by going too light and then this will throw out your whole area and make it look wrong. It is a bit of a case of not seeing the wood for the trees but in, in this instance I guess you would be seeing too much of the wood and not enough of the tree. So I generally find that if I start to lose a painting, this is what I've done. I'm focusing too much on the wood and not enough on the tree. I think the best way to avoid doing this is to keep standing back because it will help you see the painting in context. But if you are finding you just cannot see it, take a photo of your painting and then turn it into black and white and compare it with your black and white reference photo. You should be able to fix any issues using either of these two methods. My tightest, most detailed area of the painting will be his face. This is what I want you to look at. So I will tighten up my painting here. The colour shifts in his fur are very subtle, but I need to make sure I stay true to my area of greatest contrast across his face, as the white next to the black helps direct the viewer's eye here. Again, the Zorn palette helps me with my colour choices. I am adding both yellow and red with a trace of black for the pink areas around the eyes and nose. I am generally not using black and white to give me a pure grey as it is too severe.
I am always adding either yellow or red to it in varying degrees. Sometimes it's a mixture of orange. Even the lightest area across the nose is white and yellow with a trace of black. I know from observing Fin Fin's fur from life, it is not a true white and we keep him exceptionally clean because he sleeps on the furniture. His fur is actually a sort of off-white that leans to a trace of yellow or black. I'm using either my finger or my long haired coma to soften any hard edges. Generally speaking, I think soft lost edges are a bit more mysterious and therefore make for a more interesting painting. So the area where you can see a bit of my hand against the side of his face, I am just suggesting this. Losing edges will really help me keep things suggestive. I don't want to lose all my edges though. I am being selective and keeping harder edges around my area of interest. For the area of my arm, this is not important to the understanding of the painting, nor does it really add anything, so I will keep this very soft and suggestive.
This area across Fin Fin's stomach is very tricky as there are a lot of value changes and also temperature shifts as well. I'm just trying to get some paint on there so it will make it easier for me to adjust on my second layer. How much detail I put into his legs I'll have to figure out as I go along. It's going to be a bit of trial and error to see what looks right but for this first attempt I am blocking in my most obvious colours. I'm really just pushing and pulling this paint around trying to get my main blocks correct. I can't stress enough that I'm not worrying too much if I'm out because I find by leaving the painting and then coming back to it for a second go, I will have figured out where I am wrong. It also gives me an opportunity to think about it for a day or two. And so when I go back to the easel, I have a plan of action in my head. Usually I'll look at my photo of my painting and compare the values to my black and white reference photo. I'll also compare a coloured photo of my painting to my coloured reference photo so I'll know where I'm out on my temperatures too. I'll also be able to see where my drawing is out too. So all of these things I will be able to address in my second layer. So that's pretty much it for the first attempt of the overpainting. There will be a final video on this piece of artwork next week when I will show you my second layer. Hopefully the whole process will show you just how long it can take to get the likeness in some paintings. I hope you have found today's video useful. 
please like and subscribe if you can and check out my website sarahhallidayart.com where you can find examples of my work and details of online classes and lessons that I run. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.